Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, I hope you're all well. So in this video we are going to be reviewing The Scorpion King, which has recently been added to the Netflix catalogue and is a prequel to the Mummy franchise. And can you believe it? This movie franchise has spawned five sequels, five movies based on this character. So that's, you know, just awesome in and of itself. But anyway, so this film is a prequel, like I said, and tells the story of how Dwayne Johnson's character Matthias rose to fame and rose to become the Scorpion King. Obviously this character did feature in The Mummy 2, in The Mummy Returns, and was interesting in the beginning, but then his final appearance in the film was just beyond a joke. So, you know, it's really good to see that this character kind of has the attention that he deserves and kind of has the entire focus of a film. So even though it's a spin-off, it's a really cool movie. So let's deep dive and look into The Scorpion King. So the movie starts off by introducing us to a ruthless king and warrior called Memnon who is looking to rule the world and is always really successful in his war efforts because he has a sorcerer who is able to inform him on the outcome of his battles. And kind of at the same time, Dwayne Johnson's character, Matthias, his brother and his friend are the last three remaining Arcadians and they are hired by King Pharaoh to kill the sorcerer and in, and in exchange for that he's going to give him 20 blood rubies. I won't reveal what happens after this because it's a, it's a series of different spoilers but what I will say is that it's kind of, the movie kind of turns into a bit of a Aladdin stealth movie of Matthias and his crew trying to stop King Memnon from ruling the world and through his kind of efforts and his story, he also finds out that the sorcerer is actually a sorceress. So by and large, the characters and the actors in this film are actually really, really good. So it's got Dwayne Johnson as the main character, Matthias, and he holds the movie together really, really well. He's obviously a wrestler, so he does a lot of his own stunts, which makes the film look really, really good. And, you know, it is released back in 2002, so Dwayne Johnson's acting has improved a lot over time. But, you know, for what he does in this film, it's really, really good. Stephen Brand plays the evil King Memnon, and he actually does a really, really good job as well. You know, you can really, you really want to hate this character, and he plays the villain really, really well. And, you know, some movies don't have a good villain, but actually in this, in this film, it's, uh, it's really, really good by Stephen Brand's character. And then the evil sorceress, is played by Kelly Hu, who some of you might know from Sunset Beach. So she does a really, really good job as well. And it's really interesting in terms of her character and how she's acting because she's kind of, she is obviously the same person, but she brings out different attributes of her character when she's with Matthias and then brings out different attributes of her character when she's with Memnon. So I feel like her as a character is really, really interesting and in how divisive she can be with with the two main protagonists and antagonist. Michael Clark Duncan is also in this film and he plays the anti-hero Balthazar. He does a really, really good job too. And you know, you might recognize him from playing the Kingpin in the overly criticized Daredevil film. So, you know, by and large, the acting and the characters in this film are really, really good. In terms of the visuals department, there isn't too much to say. Like I said before, you know, this film was released way back when in 2002, and it does still hold its own. It isn't obviously as good as, you know, the visual effects that we see in films nowadays, but, you know, it does hold its own, and it is really, really good. And the fight sequences are really good to see. The camera angles and the way that it intensifies certain situations, that looks really cool. And, yeah, you know, overall, the visuals are really, really good. In terms of comparison, there's obviously a spin-off from the Mummy franchise and it's really, really cool to see that actually because as you all know, I'm a really big fan of the Mummy franchise and you know, I'm really, really glad to see a spin-off from there. And I think it's really, really good. In terms of comparisons, I would say the Mummy franchise, you kind of get to see more countries and the globe and different areas, whereas in this film, it's kind of all based in one kind of area. So that's another thing I would say in terms of the visuals as well, actually, is that it's all kind of one level, whereas, you know, comparatively to other similar movies, you kind of get to see more different types of terrain, etc. But, you know, that said, it's still a cool movie and it does hold its own and I would recommend seeing it. Overall, I would say, you know, The Scorpion King is a good movie. 
you do have to bear with it because it is a bit of a slow start before things kind of get going. You know, there were bits that, you know, I was just <laughs> just waiting for the movie to kind of get going. But when things do get going, then it is able to kind of sustain and hold your attention throughout. But you do kind of have to bear with it before it kind of really, really starts. But you know, overall I really did enjoy it. You know, the characters are really cool, the visuals are decent. The story is really, really good. I think the story really is what kind of holds it together and kind of has allowed it to have five iterations of this movie franchise. So you know, overall it is really, really good, but it does have a bit of a slow start. So, you know, overall I am gonna give it a 5.5 out of 10. I'd love to hear what you think of the Scorpion King, so please let me know in the comment section below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in my next video.